Hi everyone, you're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel and today I'm going to show you how to do some laser print jelly plate transfers. So you might have tried the magazines and you're thinking I'd like to do something with my own photographs. So the photographs I've taken today or you have been using today are all ones that I've taken myself and I am running some classes which there is going to be a link in the description you'd be able to join if you want to know more about this. But I'm going to show you some basics of what I do in this video today. So let's get started. So if you don't already have a jelly plate, I'm using today my 8x10 gel press printing plate. And I'm going to have links in the description. Make sure you save and um, subscribe and share my videos if you like them. So today I'm using a laser print of a picture of Paris that I took in 2000. And 20 just before COVID struck. So it um, was a lovely, lovely journey. And what I'm going to do first is put some colour down. Now you will notice that my gel plate looks grotty and dirty. I only clean it off when I really want to do something fresh and new, but I'm wanting a bit of a grungy effect here. So what I'm using is white paint. Now what I'm going to do first for this is prepare a background. So um, there is another video that I've just done recently where I did everything in layers and pulled all the layers up at once. This is not going to be like that. In this particular video, I am going to do all the layers over the paper first and then I'm going to do the gel print um, transfer over the top of it. Because I want, I'm going to be using that picture of Paris, I've decided I kind of want a mystical look in the background. So I thought if I leave the white towards the center and just roll some of that creamy beigey color, it's actually called raw sienna. And I'm going to pull this print just like this. This is going to have many layers, but each time I do a layer, I'm going to do the layer um, and pull it onto paper and then let the paper dry a little bit. And I'm not even really waiting for it to dry, to be honest. So that's my first pull. And you can see that's also cleaned my plate. But I love all that sort of texture in my backgrounds. If you don't want that, make sure you clean your plates. Everyone is very, this is very personal. Um, I clean my plate when I want to really want a bit of a change. But other than that, I kind of like this look. So this time I'm using the raw sienna just on its own and I'm leaving the center a bit lighter and I'm just rolling this on. My plate keeps moving. Now I'm going to use a stencil and just stencil a little bit on here. So when I say that I'm just getting my roller. I don't want the edge of that stencil so I'm kind of just leaning it up a little bit at an angle so that I don't get that edge and you can see there's a very faint thing of leaves in there I'm really just looking for a bit of texture in the background and I'm putting this straight over the top of the one I did before so the great thing about jelly plate transfers is that if you don't like what you've done you can always go over it with another layer so I'm kind of happy with this leafy texture that I have now and now I'm going to add a bit of burnt sienna into it as well because I really want a little bit more dark in the top and the bottom so I'm just using burnt sienna. Now I also want to say that I am using golden paints here but I'm really using them for the colors. Um, you can be using any paints for this process. The background it really doesn't matter. I do have some favorite paints when it comes to doing the actual um, jelly plate pull and you will actually have to do a little bit of experimenting with that to get just what you want. What I'm doing with this burnt sienna is I'm doing a pull here just to get the writing. So this is a glossy piece of paper out of a book with black writing and you can see it leaves the writing there. Now I'm not just going to throw this piece of paper away. This will become a piece of paper that I use in my mixed media art journaling as well. So I've got just this sort of grungy looking background 
and I'm going to put my piece of paper back over the top of that. So, you know, every time you do this, make sure that you use, use your hand firmly. You can use the roller as well, but I find I can feel it better with my hands. And now I have sort of some of the writing through there as well. And I kind of find that a bit interesting. I like, I like a lot of texture. I love mixed media. Now, because I want the water to have like a bit of a whiteness to it, because we've got the water, um, it was a rainy day actually in Paris, and there was lots of reflections and water and I want to emulate it, that a little bit. So what I'm doing here is just the very last layer. <laughs> Before I do my image pull, I'm going to just add the um, a little bit of white to it. You can see that this does make quite a bit of difference. So sometimes you really do need to think about the picture that you're putting over the top so that you get a nice kind of, I, I suppose, composition to it. It's important to have um, that. So you can see here, when I pull it up, I've got all those lovely colors in the background. I've got my writing in the background, but I've also lightened the bit where the Eiffel Tower is going to be. Now that piece of paper that I had, I'm going to keep using that to pull up paint. So I'm ready now to do my image transfer and I'm just cleaning my plate here with this. And this becomes a great piece of beautiful paper that I can use for my, um, mixed media work. The good thing about what I've done there of doing all those layers as well is that I've really primed my plate. So if you're doing jelly plate transfers, it's worth doing a few pulls first to prime your plate. It just means that we get a better result. I'm changing my brayer so that um, I'm using one that I'll, I'm just going to use for black. And it really is about getting a nice even layer. So you can see I roll both directions and just sort of checking if I've got enough paint. The important thing here is not too much paint. You don't want to see a roller texture. So when I do this, I'll roll it until I kind of see an even sheen. Some people like to use a bigger roller, but it, you don't have to. Now I'm taking my image. Now that needs to be a very black and white laser print not a bubble jet print and in my classes we do a lot of working on um, problem solving if you have issues with this particular um, part of it but you can see here when I pull it up I have an almost perfect um, image of the Eiffel Tower now because my paper has so many layers and it's a little bit damp still it actually pulls up the black better than it would if it was just dry paper. So I kind of worked out with a bit of experimenting that you could do that. Now I'm just using my brayer there, cleaning it off because it's the back of the paper. But um, this is where I do make sure I give it a really good rub because I want all of that ink to come up and be over the top of my picture and you can see here there's next to no ink left on the plate as I pull this up and there we have it we have a beautiful picture of the Eiffel Tower and we've got all that writing in the background we've got the white and almost those little white streaks at the bottom looks like reflections in and it really reminds me of the day to be honest so now I'm going to do my lovely picture that I took in Bruges. Now it is really important to get your photos nice and um, black and white, as black and white as possible. And also you really, really, it's kind of critically important that it's a good thick coat of laser print. Now again, like I said, in my um, classes I will explain all those things about getting your picture exactly right. But I'm going to speed this up now and you can watch how I go about putting this one together.
You gotta love watching the reveal. I, I, every, I get excited every time I do this. And this is a very favourite picture of mine because it was when I was in Bruges in 2020. And the chocolate capital, I feel, of the world. So it's just a beautiful photo that gives me happy memories and I'm going to stick that in my journal. So the last one I'm going to do is a picture of myself that I've taken and I took that, took that over in England on my holiday. This is a great way of put, doing some scrapbooking in your um, art journals or just putting pictures up on the wall. They look terrific framed. So I'm going to speed this up again, but do watch it because I'm doing different techniques every time, just showing you different ways to do backgrounds. And I'm also using gold in the back of this one. So you can use so many different colors, so many different paints. And I know that a lot of us have lots of acrylics that we um, would love to use. And our jelly plate is definitely the place to use them. I just wanted to show you here um, I've actually done a print and I was going to delete this out of the video but I was actually wanting to show you because it's not actually helpful to delete things when they go wrong because then you don't know that sometimes it happens to everyone so what I've actually done here is I have um, I've put a thin layer on and it wasn't quite thick enough so I've got my picture and also can you see here I've put my um, ink on and I feel it was too thin so you can do it too thin and you can do it too thick but when I pull this up here I have a look at it and you can see it's kind of all right and you know I probably could have pulled this one but it's very very faint so the truth is if you've done a beautiful background don't bother this with this one do another print and what I'm doing here is just putting it onto that piece of paper that I'm going to use for um, my journal and I'm going to do it again because it's not quite good enough and especially if you've created a background that you truly love you can see there that I can use that in a journal page as a background it hasn't been wasted it's not it's not going to be thrown away but you do um, need to in this case I find that I need just a fraction more paint when I do a laser print pool than if I do a magazine pool so that's pretty interesting so here I'm going to use the photo again and this time I have a much much better result so remember when you're um, watching this, please share this video if there's anybody you know who'd like to do this or'd like to do classes. So you can see this one here is much blacker. So I'm going to get a much nicer result. So I'm just putting my paper on now, giving it a firm rub. What I like to do too is sometimes you'll get air bubbles under there and this firm rub will stop the air bubbles. So I'm just giving that a firm rub and as I pull it up I can see it's pulling up all the image it's a little bit of a ghost left behind but mostly the image is there and I'm quite happy with that that's something I would stick in my journal so I hope you enjoyed this video and it prompts you to maybe come along to one of my classes where we go in depth into this so make sure you subscribe and share my videos ask questions if you want any more information check out the info in the description you're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel in Australia and I hope to see you again soon thanks for watching bye